Hello guys, welcome to week 15 of our lecture for IM102, our advanced database. So the topic for this week is using NoSQL operators, performing insert, date, delete, and select queries, as well as projection, limit, as well as sorting. Now, when we say uh, insert documents or insertion commands under MongoDB, we use the db.collection.insert method to add or insert new documents into a collection in our database. There is also what we call an absurd command, which there are also two methods, db.collection.update and db.collection.save used for the same purpose. These methods add new documents to an operation called upsert. Upsert is an operation that performs either an update of an existing document or an insert of a new document if the document to modify does not exist. Okay, for our insert command, the syntax is db collection name that insert. So let's take an, an example to demonstrate how to insert a document into a collection. In this example, we are going to insert a document in a collection name, Jamba point. This operation will automatically create a collection if the collection does not exist. So this will be our code. So we will be inserting course details having duration and trainer as well as batch having size and quantity and category so remember db that collection name that insert so we will be using our two compilers uh, we have the m play and no SQL booster. Uh, just a reminder, in order for you to use your no SQL booster, you need to have your um, Ma Ma MongoDB Atlas running. Okay, and then you just need to sign up. You just have to make sure that your cluster is created. And then under cluster, click connect so that you could find uh, your connection string. So your connection string is this one. Okay. So you just need to insert the connection string under your connection. So you just need to create a new connection. Insert the server that you had uh, copied. Okay, so do not insert the other strings. We do not need that. We just need the um, exact connection as well as the database if you have one. And then do not forget under under authentication. You could provide the username, which is usually SA, and then the password. For that one, you could actually set the database access. So this is our SA, and then you just need to set the password for your particular database user. So once you have it, you can now connect. Just test the connection if you want, and then see your connection afterwards. After doing that, you will be directed to your uh, MongoDB database. Whereas if you use mplay, you just need to reset uh, your compiler, uh, your browser, so that um, you will have a blank database and then you can specify your database if you want but in this instance 
uh, usually uh, the default that we have is the one provided by the system. So you just need to insert the commands. Don't bother changing the versions. Okay, select the higher highest version available. Now let us get started. So first is we will use the M play. Okay. So I have pasted my command here. Press enter. Okay, so result is successful. Or no SQL booster. Paste, click run. Okay, command is successful. Notice um, the right result will appear under no SQL booster, whereas for mplay, we will just uh, receive a result in the last line after the command that you have entered. Okay, so how do we check the inserted document? In order for you to return all the records in your collection, you just need to type command db.collectionName.find. So what it does is to, it will return all the records, all the documents in your collection. Remember that collection is like a table and document are, are documents like a record. Okay, so let us try to execute command. So notice it will return the data that we have inserted. Same goes for no SQL booster. So for this one, you just need to highlight, right click, and then run statement at cursor so that uh, you can run the highlighted code without executing the entire uh, window where in your codes are located. So notice here, you can see the ID and then the, the columns or the fields that we have. Insert with multiple documents. If you want to insert multiple documents in the collection, you have to pass an array of documents to the db.collection.insert method. Take note, mplay does not support the insertion of uh, multiple documents. So for this example, you need to use the SQL booster. Okay, take note of that when you execute this particular command and then try to insert this, mplay will return an error. Okay, so we will not execute this under mplay, but we will execute this one under SQL booster. So what we are doing is we are declaring a variable called all courses that will hold our array of documents. Notice how many records are there. There are three records, course details batch category, course details batch category, course details batch and category. So three records. And then before inserting that, you need to call the insert command and then Inside the insert method, you place your variable name. Okay. So let us highlight, right click, then run statement. Okay. Sorry. Highlight. Right click, run statement. Okay. 
Okay, and we will check the error. So unfortunately, we cannot run the code by highlighting it. So what we did was to paste the code into a new uh, shell tab or a new window for our command. So I just make sure that it is the only command present and then just click run. After clicking it, you will have your data inserted. So those three records will now be inserted. In order for us to check, you could uh, run db.jabatpoint.find. So notice we have those three records inserted. We could also use the bulk command to insert multiple uh, documents into our collection. Uh, first, we need to initialize a bulk operation builder for the collection Java point. So what we do is declare bar, bar, then the variable of our bulk operation equals to db.jabat point that initialize an ordered bulk of, okay? Again, this will not work with mplay. So we will just use particular window. Okay. So we will just pass that insert. We'll insert this particular data. Then click run. Countering an error. Okay, I forgot the bulk that execute. Okay, so this will be the last code. Okay, so after executing bulk that execute, we can check. data inside our collection. Okay, so this is our inserted data. So for updating of document, we use the db.collectionName.update method, which accepts two parameters. First one is the selection criteria, and then the second is updated data. So for example, we have this um, data here. So let's check if this one already exists. Okay. 
after this data is the one that we are going to update so after insertion so we check using find and then next we update the existing course java into android so how do we do that so what we do is Java point that update okay what field course that is java you set it to course which is android okay so run okay then let us check if java has been converted or updated into android okay so the first one the first data that we have has been updated into android okay notice the next record it was not updated the next record which is java however the first data which is which was java also was updated. what will happen if we repeat the command just try this number or this if this fifth record will also be updated So we now have all of our course, which is Java, updated into Android. So notice only the first instance of the record was updated. We also have the delete command. So in MongoDB, the db.collection.remove method is just to delete documents from a collection. It works on two parameters. We have deletion criteria and we also have just one. It removes only one document, one set to true or one. So the syntax is like this one. If we want to remove all the documents, we use that remove and then inside our open and close parentheses, we just place a blank curly braces. So be very careful when doing this one as it will remove all the contents of your collection. If you want to, for example, remove just a document that match a particular condition, you just need to place the field as well as the value of that particular field. If you want to delete only the first, document you just place second parameter as one in this example let us try to remove only the first course which is android then let's go back to our example and do this one in mplay So, course, Android, just run, okay, then let us Notice our Android record or uh, Android documents were deleted.
However, I think also the other Android record was also deleted. If I'm not, Android document was also deleted. Okay, so it should have been only one. So I need to check what happened. So let's try to insert this again. Let's try to insert two documents and then okay, Java. Try to change this. Okay, this is Java. Then run using one. Okay, let's find again. Okay, so only. Only the first Java was deleted. Okay. The second one is still there. Okay. So let's try to run the examples earlier. For M play. So first is insert record. Okay, so record box is success, successful. Next we check the contents. So we have two records for our documents for Java. And then we will change or update the course Java. Notice, guys, huh? when you are calling the fields, you can use single code or double code, or you could also remove the single code or the double code when calling the fields, as we did with our examples earlier. So let us update. For me, I think it would be better if you place single code for all of the columns just to make sure to note that you are calling a string field or the name of the field, which is a string. So let us execute this one. Okay, and then let us display the contents of our collection. Okay, so notice only the first document was affected. The second one was not updated to Android. So let us try to again insert another document with course Java so that will have three documents okay we have Android Java Java and then let us try to remove it using the criteria that we have is earlier which is the name of the column followed by the value that we want to remove or delete and then followed by the second parameter one which means that we will only be removing the first instance of our document
So we're going to try to place single code. Okay. Enter. Recognize command. Command Try to remove this. Okay, so we have an authorized command. I think we're not allowed to use remove, maybe. So let us try to use. This one, try to remove all. Okay, so we are not authorized under MP to use the remove command. So let us move on to the next command. So in MongoDB, the db.collection.find Method is used to retrieve documents or records from a collection, which is equivalent to a table. This returns a cursor to the retrieved documents. It reads operations in MongoDB shell and retrieves document containing other fields. You can also restrict the fields to return in the, in the retrieved documents by using some specific queries. For example, you could use db.collection.find1 method to return a single document. It works the same as that find method, but find1 has a limit of 1. So let us try to use find1 okay Find one is not working here. So let's try to use it. Matthew Wooster. Okay, notice only one particular document or record is returned from the collection. Select all documents in the collection. Okay, just use tb.collection name that find that we have shown earlier. There's also what we call the pretty method, which displays the result in a formatted way. So after find or find one, you add property that pretty, okay, which will format our record. So let's try. That one. So let's first try to use find one. This one will work. Okay. Pretty is not a function. So let's try to use find. Okay. So I think this is already formatted as pretty. So find one does not have the pretty method but only find okay query and projection operator mongo query operator includes comparison logical element evaluation geospatial array bitwise and comment operator however for this example I'll only be showing you the comparison logical um, element and evaluation as, as well as array, I think. 
um, but we will not be tackling their spatial bit twice and comments. However, the example for your spatial bit twice and comments are included in this particular notes or lecture. You could use geospatial for querying documents that usually in, involves location. So maybe you could use this when you are creating uh, a game. Like let's say you want to find a particular item or in a racing game to set up the particular location or what we call waypoints in which um, your opponent must turn or your car must go to. Okay. Um, bitwise involves bits inside uh, your documents and comment involves comments about particul your particular um, document. So first is comparison operators. Uh, the first one that we have is the EQ or equal to equality condition. So we use this particular query um, operator inside our find, okay? So in this example, um, we are finding a book that has a price that is equal to 300. So in this example, we will be Uh, changing this a bit. So under first, let's try to use mplay. So take note of your syntax. So we use Java point. Then let's try to have equal. So let's say quantity. Pty equal to 15. Try to use this. So no record is returned. Under batch. So let's try to use particular column without without sub data. Let's take force. Not forget your double quote or single quote. Let's say Java. Okay, it returns two records. Or two documents. We also have the value greater than for GT. So for this example, we need to set Value, so let's create TV that book. Try to insert this blank data insert. Then book one and two hundred Book two, three fifty.
try. This one will be inserted properly. Expected token. Okay. Okay, try use. Just be curly braces. Okay. Curly braces. Curly braces. Okay, and next let's try to find using JT so greater than so let's try to find JT we have three hundred and three fifty. So let's try to find all the documents greater than 300. It will return, it should return book 2, which is 350. Okay, no record. Uh, sorry, course, not course, but price. Don't forget single code. Okay. Find price. So not Java point, but book. Book. Okay. Price greater than. Okay, I'll check what's happening first. Okay, so upon checking, I was only able to insert one record. So earlier it was not working properly. So we inserted the second book again, so book two, having a price of 350. So after doing that, we did a query having GT or greater than 300 of the field or column price. So it returns book, it returned book two, having a price of 350. We also have greater than or equal. So meaning to say either this greater than or equal to the amount. So if we change this to GTE, it will return two records because it will find 300 and the 350. We also have the in operator where all the documents where the value of a field equals any value in the specific array. We use in one, two, three. So for example, we have two hundred. 301 and 350. Okay. Sorry. And after. Three fifty. Okay. We also have the less than greater, so we will not do that anymore. We also have less than or equal, and then we also have the not equal greater, um, wherein it uses the documents where the field value is not equal to the specified value. So let's try to do that one. 
will not equal to 300, meaning it will only return book 2, which is 350. Okay. And then we also have blank record here earlier, so it will also return that. We have not in. So it will choose all the documents except for the values stated inside our array. Not in. It will return book one, which is 300, because 300 is not in this list. Okay, next is the logical operator. First is the end operator. The array uh, should be one or more expression. And we choose a document that satisfies all the particular expressions. So in this instance case, we have one and two conditions. So both of these conditions should be true. So it says here that the price should not be equal to 500 and that the column of price should exist. Otherwise, it will not be included. So let's try to look at this example to take note of your syntax. And price is not equal to 500 and price Price is not equal to, let's say, 300 and price column exists, meaning to say should not include this particular document because there is no price. Okay, enter. So we have both two because the price is 350 and the price column exists. We have the not operator. So works as a logical not wherein it uses the documents that are not related to the expression. Price is not greater than 300. So we have what 300 under book one and the record here because the price is not greater than 300 there's actually no column for that we also have the nor or not all not sorry nor not or okay it chooses the documents that fail all the query in the array. So meaning to say it must fail both this condition. So let's try to execute. So price is 200 and the sale column is two, meaning there is a sale column. So try to return. One, book one, and then this one. Not or. So price is 300, it is not 200, and then the sale is false. Under here, sale is true. So sale is not included here, including the price. So that's why this first record was included, although the columns were not available because it satisfied both of these conditions are not true, okay? We also have the or, at least one of the conditions, so I will not do that anymore. We have also an example here uh, using and and or. So notice here, in order for, uh, in order for us to get the and and the or, in this example, we have where likes is greater than 10. So we use likes greater than 10. And then we use or. And then inside or, notice that we placed again two conditions. So 
to buy and title column. So that is how you would use a combination of and and or. Okay. We also have the element operator. Which examples is exist. The exist operator matches the documents that contain the field when Boolean is true. It also matches the document where the field value is not. So we have here uh, exist, quantity exist, okay, is true, and it should not be in 5 or 15, okay. So let's try to use this one. So we don't have any quantity, but we have um, price. Okay. Price, it exists, it should not be in. 300 and that be in 301. So let's just try to use this one. Unrecognize. Okay. We have problem with space. Okay. Still error. Right. Okay, we'll check with the code first. Okay, we just forgot or we were missing a closing, a closing tag. Okay, so in this instance, price should exist and it should not be 300 or 301. So the first record that we have is blank. So it's not included because the price certainly doesn't have the column price. And the second record that we have is 300, uh, the value of the price. So it is also not included. So what is included is book two having a price of 350. We also have the type. Um, if you want to check a column having a data, data type of that particular type. Um, this BSON type is included in our lecture last meeting or last week. So you can check if you want to find the particular uh, BSON type value that you need. So let us just try to use this one. So we don't have any book ID, so let's try to use price, and then type one, okay. So no record of that one, about type three, no record also, let me check. It's on data type number for integer is 16. So once you 16, it will return two records for in our price as, a, as an integer value. Okay. We have the evaluation operator. So the evaluation operator, we, the first operator that we have is EXPR. Allows the use of aggregation expressions within the query language. So for example, we have greater than product where the products greater than the price. So let's check expression. Okay. 
Okay. Television product, let's say 300. Check out this one, this will work. Start working. So let's try prices greater than 300. Not working. Okay, let's check our sample. Okay, guys, so we just created a new document under collection monthly budget in order for us to have a new um fields for examples or columns for examples um we inserted five documents having the columns category budget and spent so after doing that um using the expr operator we would like to find all the documents were in the field or column spent is greater than the budget okay so notice if we are doing this one we need to add a dollar sign on before the name of our particular field or column in order for us to emphasize that we are comparing uh, values of those two columns. So after doing that, we come up with three documents that were in the spent amount is greater than the budget. Okay. We also have the JSON schema operator, which will not uh, we will not tackle anymore. We also have the mod operator selects the document where the value of a field is divided by a device or has the specified remainder so for example here we have um, the quantity we're in the mod and the remainder should be 200 or zero Okay, let's try to use that one. Okay. So field, the price, and then dollar sign mod. Okay, for example, zero and two. Sorry, there's no column price. Divisor cannot be zero. So let's say spent. So this is our divisor. To 50, let's say 50, and the remainder is zero. Remainder should be zero. Okay, so we are going to look for column spent, and then we divide it by 50, and then we get all the document having a remainder of zero. So for 50, there are 50, 150. Okay, all of this one will have a remainder of zero. And then we also have what we call the regex, which uh, is used to found 
example, to find document having the regular expression patterns. So let's try to. Execute. This one, so place. Six, seven, eight, nine. So non. No record for that one. Three, three, nine, nine. How about zero, zero? Okay. So let's check on this one later. And we use the symbol dollar sign at the end of a particular um, pattern. So notice the pattern starts with slash, followed by the pattern, then followed by the symbol, and then slash again. So in this instance, the dollar symbol denotes that um, all characters at the end of that particular column are all values ending with this particular character or characters under this particular column. So in, the, in this instance, all title having one at the end of the value of that particular column will be search. About for this one, the caret symbol denotes that all characters at the beginning having this particular value will be searched. So in this instance, all title having a starting value of B, capital B, will be returned. We also have the text operator which searches a text on the content of the field index with the text index. Let's try to check. Text index required, so we do not have a text index yet. So that's why it will not work properly. Um, anyway, we will have an example of a text index later on. Okay, uh, where operators used for passing either a string containing a JavaScript containing a JavaScript expression or a full JavaScript function to the query system. So we will not include this one anymore. This one is um, quite complicated already, but you could try to look for the examples under the MongoDB manual. We have lots of examples about the different syntax that you could use. We use spatial operator. As I have said, we will not be using that anymore, um, but only a, a brief walkthrough we can find uh, geospatial data intersection usually with coordinates or locations such as latitude and longitude okay. you could actually use this one for um, waste grab uh, food panda pay delivery Notice how they would check on the location as well as the available drivers or riders in your area. Okay. Bitwise, bitwise operator will also we will also not tackle that anymore, as well as comments operator. We will not be um, tackling that anymore. Next is uh, projection. In uh, MongoDB, projection means selecting only the necessary data rather than selecting 
pull up the data of a document. If the document has five fields, and you need to only show three, then select only three fields from them. So the find method. When you execute the find method, it displays all fields of a document. To limit this, you need to set a list of fields with value one or zero. One is used to show the field, while zero is used to hide the fields. So for example, syntax is db that collection name that find and then the key so considering this data we want to only display the title of the document while querying the document so find curly braces comma title okay one Meaning to say we only want to display the title and then the ID is zero, meaning we will not display that. So once you um, use this query, it will only display your title. So let us try to use this one in our previous example. Take note guys, I am using uh, my play because almost all of the codes all of the codes will also work in OSCAR Booster and MyPlay. So we will just only use this one compiler so that we will not be repeating anymore. So title ID. Okay, so let's try to run this one. Take note, we also have price and sale. What will happen if we will not uh, specify that? Okay, take note, they were all displayed. So let us try setting some of the fields to zero. Price, sale, the title, ID, price, not here. It's not working properly. Okay, let me check. Okay, so unfortunately, the error that we're having is that uh, I tried to execute this one in OSQL in order, in order for it to return the particular error. Notice that when we try to hide the price or sale, and when you try to execute this, it will return an error saying that you cannot hide the column price or sale. I do not know why, what is the cost of that, but if we try to display sale and price and then hide ID, it will now work. Okay. Oh, it's not working here, sorry guys. But this one. Notice the ID was hidden. Only the title, the book, and the sale. The title, the price, and the sale was displayed. Okay. Maybe because of the version uh, that we are using. MongoDB projection operator, the dollar sign operator, limits the contents of an array from the query contain only the first element matching the query document. We also have the LM match. The content of the array field made limited using this operator from the query result contain only the first element matching the element LM match. And the meta operator returns the result for each matching document where the metadata associated with the query.
lines controls the number of values in an array that the query returns. Okay. And let us try to do at least one uh, operator for our projection operator. Okay, guys. So using projection, the dollar sign operator, the dollar sign is operator is used to signify how many of the elements inside the array will be returned. So in this instance, in this example, we have for each quantity column, we have three elements. Okay, so we will only be using that dollar sign, we will only be returning one. And then using our filter operator, we need to find all the batches having one and quantity which is greater than or equal to 180. So let's try to execute. Okay. Greater than or equal to an eight. Under batch one. Let's try batch two. Okay, I'll check again. Okay, um, sorry, we had a wrong naming of the collection under fine, so that's why it's not returning any value earlier. Anyway, um, what will happen is that, as I said earlier, the dollar sign operator will return or will check for the array or for the values inside our field and will return I will check only the first instance if that particular field is following the filter that we have set. So in this instance, we had said that the batch should be 2 and the quantity should be greater than or equal to 180. To notice in this first example, we have 179, but the next row is 185, so that is greater than or equal to 180. Then the next document, again, is 188, so it's greater than or equal to 180. And then for the next example, batch 1, the same uh, thing also happens. So that is how you would use the dollar symbol. You are wondering why all the three elements were returned. Okay, I think there's a problem with mplay. But if you are going to use no SQL booster, which is uh, supports better and has uh, better output of data, notice that if we execute that one, it will only return okay the quantity that pass the condition only one particular element is returned okay for example we change it to batch two okay notice only the element that has followed the criteria or filter is returned not Anymore like this one, which is 179, 185, 180, only 185 is returned because that is the first one under the column that follows this particular criteria. Okay. So, let's try to do an example for LM match.
Now, for the L match, okay, uh, I will not type that this anymore. It's quite long, but I will explain to you um, the example. In this example, we have ID batch and trans details. Under trans detail, we can have multiple um, subgrouping called quantity, P rate, and MRP. So notice in this one, it has three. This one, it has two. And then it has one. So in order for us to use LMatch, take note LMatch only returns the first instance of the particular field or column that you have requested. In this instance, we are going to find all the batch with the value of 10452, wherein the trans details has an LMatch of 50. Okay. P rate 50, meaning to say we will only get all the trans details, the first instance of trans details having a P rate of 50. So in this instance, notice that we have 1, 2, which is P rate 50, but only the first one will be returned. So quantity 200, so here it is, quantity 200, and then Number four, only one, so P rate 50. Okay, so that is how you would use LM match. Okay, guys, um, we will not talk about the meta operator anymore. Okay, um, but we go to the meta operator. Returns the result of, for each matching document wherein the metadata associated with the query. So also remember is a met metadata is data about data. It is a data describing about our particular data. Usually in this instance, it describes your field. Okay. So next we will be going to the MongoDB update operator. These operators are available for update operations, namely collection that update and collection that find and modify. So we have the field operator. First one is the current date. Update the element of a field to the current date, either as a date or timestamp. The default data type is date. So we have here sample. Maybe that books that insert one so last modified purchase date and then the particular value we also have the ink which increases the field by the specified value we have min which is the value of a field a specific value if the specified value is less than the current value of the field. For example, here we have an ID, high price and low price. So DB was at update ID so twenty one in the minimum value is high price five hundred. Okay. So for min a minimum we have this example. So we insert this data. So we have ID high price and low price. So high price is 500. So we use dbbox.update to update ID 021. Okay. We set the value of high price to 500 here. The current value of high price is 
I valid is less than the current value of our existing field, which is height 5. So because this is 800 and 500 is less than 800, high price will become 500. Same goes for max. So we will update the value of that field if the value that we specified is greater than the current value of the field. So what will happen here? High price will become 950. So next we also have mole, which multiplies the value of a field by a number. So we have here mole price number decimal so 180.25 and then quantity is 2. Let us try to run this one if this one will work because I think there's no ID for one. Number decimal is not defined. So it's not working here. I think this one will work here. Okay. So there's no modified number because there's no ID for one. So number decimal converts string into a decimal. So we multiply the price to the quantity. Okay. That's the use of mole. The name operator changes the name of a field. So we use update many. So let us try. So Rene, title two, oh my God. Okay. Try to check. Title has now become Pamagat. So set operator change the value of a field with a specified value. Okay, set on insert. If the upsert is set to true, then it results in an insert. Then set on insert operator assigns a specified values to the field in the document. And set removes a specified field. So we will not be talking about that, but we will try to make use of unset. Removes a specified field. So let us try to. How about try to remove bro low price? Set low price. And recognize command.
you have encountered an error, so that means that case. So for intent, we need first to specify what particular document will be updated. So in this instance, I set it to ID 17. And then I want to unset or remove the column low price. So notice, set it to double quotation, which is blank. Next, we try to display our collection just to double check. And there you have it. So price is not or is removed from our document. Okay. So for this other operate operators, we will not be tackling them anymore, but you could try to research on how they are used. We have for the array operators, we have the dollar sign. We, wherein we can update an element in an array without specifying the position of the element. We have dollar sign and then bracket, which indicates that the update operator should change all the elements in the given array field. We have add to set. We also have pop which can remove the first or last element of an array. We can also use the pull operator, which can remove all instances of a value in an array that matches the specified condition. We have push, which appends or adds a specified value to an array. We have pull all, which removes all instances of the specified value from an existing array. A position specifies a location where the push operator inserts element inside an array and slice used to limit the number of array elements during the push operator. We also have sort which modifies the values of the array during the push operation. Okay, bit once operator will not tackle that anymore. is how you would use the bitwise operator. MongoDB limit method. The MongoDB limit method is used to limit the fields of a document that you want to show. Sometimes you have a lot of fields in the collection of your database and have to retrieve only one or two. In such case, limit is used. Limit is used together with the find operator. So let's say, for example, we have this data. And you need to display only one field by using the limit method. So that limit and then how many fields. So let us try to use it in our example to find that limit. So let's say two. It will display two documents. that box that find that limit about okay. one okay. check the error so in my blades not working, but for noise skin booster it is working. Limit is working, so we could set how many documents we want to display. Next skip method is used to skip the document. It should it is used with find and limit methods. For example, the scenario. Stick it to column query to retrieve only one document and skip two documents after the execution. 
we will be with this result. So skip when you enter your data, it will skip that data and then it will display one record after skipping the first two records. So let's try limit one, skip one. So it will show the second record. Okay. MongoDB sort method. This is to sort the documents in the collection. It accepts a document containing list of fields. The sorting order is 1 for ascending and negative 1 for descending. Okay. For example, we want to sort it according to course. So course, descending, negative 1. Okay, so for this example, let's try to sort by say price. Sort. Three fifty three hundred about price positive one or ten three hundred three fifty. Okay, so that concludes our lengthy lesson for today. Um, if you want to get the mapping of how SQL is compared to no SQL, you can take a look at the table that we have provided in your lecture. Okay. So the differences in the commands, third, select, okay. update, and delete statement, take note. For delete statement, if you are going to delete many, or if you are going to delete with a particular condition, you use delete many and then the condition. If you want to delete all, do not provide any condition. So to use the update many, so it will update all the documents as long as the condition is true. It also use, if I'm not mistaken, update and delete, but it will only update and delete the first instance of your document. Mongo text search. So MongoDB performs a text search of string content using the query operation. It uses a text index and operator to perform the text. Example, it shows you how to build a text index and use it to find your books. Now you have to create a collection name library as follows. Shirt. Let's try to use simply. Okay. Text index in MongoDB. We have text index to support text search queries and string content. The field that have any string value or narrow string elements may include by text index. We have we must have a text index in our collection to perform text search queries. In a table or collection, we can have only one text search index, but multiple fields can be covered by a single index. 
we can run the following example in Mongo shell to allow text search over, over the name and description field. I'm not sorry, so we need cannot use and play here. So let's just use can move first. Okay. Okay. So I created the index name and description text operator we can use the text operator to perform text searches on the table with the text index text operator will flag the search string which uses the white space and also most of the punctuation as delimiters the text operator performs a logical OR for all such tokens in the string. An example below, we can use the query to find all libraries containing any related to MongoDB, Java, DBMS, etc. So DB library that find text search Java. You can also search for exact phrases by wrapping them in double quotation code double quotes only those documents will be matched that include those places so let's try to see if this one will return anything so no record found i think the reason behind this is that it should have been library so let's Try to insert this again. Okay. And then let's try to use find. Okay, Java. Okay, there you have it. That's your book. We have search either by name or by description. How about A, B, C? Okay, by A, B, C. How about you if you want to find the exact string? If you have a book. Okay, sorry, sorry. Because we do not have any value for that one. How about just Java? Okay. Sorting. MongoDB returns the result by default in unsorted order. An optimum score will be computed for each document by the text search query that specifies how well the document matches the query. In the above example, we explicitly project the meta text score field to sort the result in order of relevance score. Okay, so text search Java score meta text score that sorts for text. So let's check if this one will work. I do not think we have a text score field. Or, or meta text for ID name and description. Okay. Okay, so score is computed 
for each document by the text search query which specifies how well a document matches the query. So it will search for Java and then it will give out a score. And based on the score, we can sort the data. So in this instance, okay, only one data was retrieved. We have a score of 1.1. One point one. Okay, as we found, we have a year in under the name. Okay. Sort it according to the score, but there's only one data. Let us try to search another data. This time one oh six. Then I will put here Java my okay. Then let us find again. Okay, so notice here. We now return to records. Notice that 1.1 was returned for Java. If I'm not mistaken, this means that we have the extract return result. Only the difference was the case. So Java, Java. And then in this instance, we also find Java. However, there are other words. That's why it has a lower score of. 75 okay so it's like an automatic score given to us by mongodb based on how well it has found the data or the text that we are looking for okay so that's it guys and thank you for keeping up with our long lesson.